Hi guys, at the time I'm recording this, it's Superhero Day, and I'm also a little sick. So if I sound off at times, that's what it is, so fair warning. When I was little, I gazed upon the TV with awe as I saw a selfish war profiteer realize the error of his ways and become a man made of iron. I saw a kid from Brooklyn with a heart of gold get superhero steroids and sacrifice himself and get lost in time for the greater good. I saw an arrogant prince become exiled and sent to a wasteland in his eyes, only to become human and go from arrogant god to righteous hero. I saw a man cursed by his own genius, haunted by the only monster he could never beat, the one inside him. But through sheer willpower, he turned the beast into an ally for good. And the two that didn't get movies. But Black Widow. Black Widow was sh That being said, the MCU or the first three phases were planned, mine were not. And I planned to go into the entertainment industry and make my own stories. But originally I only had one idea, Thundersnow. Zack Wakerson was a rich kid who had everything. Loved by his peers, his family, and through cheating, I mean studying with his genius of a best friend, he was set to go to a good college. Zack has basically the perfect life. Until he discovers he has superpowers after nearly being kidnapped, Zack can shoot lightning from his body, move with super speed, freeze absolutely anything, and so much more. But before he can process any of this, he finds out his mom was hospitalized in the aftermath of a hit. And the person who called the hit was Joseph Bradley, the main competitor of his family's company, Kazuko Industries. This was likely nothing more than an attempt to cause disorder in the company to gain some type of advantage. But this still outraged Zack, and using his tech from his best friend and his newfound powers, and his re more recent friend Sarah's imagination, I guess, Zack becomes Thundersnow. He goes out to find clues on Bradley's criminal activities to help expose him, but every now and again he'd save some people, which unintentionally gave him the reputation as the town's superhero, getting a lot more recognition than he'd like. But Zack was very vain and didn't exactly mind it either. Meanwhile, we slowly realize that Bradley has a lot more plan than just a monopoly on insurance. Thundersnow was my first OC that felt like it was really mine, and his story had been all over the place for a while, but I'm starting to refine it a little bit. And out of all my projects, I will always love it forever and the most. Yeah, however, when I was 14, I wanted to create a test series to learn how to create my own story, so whenever I did the mishaps and hiccups, I would do it there and not in Thundersnow. Thus, I thought of a simple draft on a new OC, but it would continue to evolve constantly as I was writing the story until it just ended up as Gray Fletcher. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't decided on the story of Gray Fletcher just yet. She had one. I'm kind of just in a cycle where I get interested in Gray and then I lose interest and then I get inspiration all over again and then I get a new story and then it happens over and over and over again. And that's happened like three times at this point, so. Telling you what her story is right now is going to feel pointless because it's probably going to get changed. All you need to know right now is that Grey was a lab experiment. She was made as a weapon to combat other superhumans. Her power is to copy the abilities of others. However, the caveat is she can only use a handful of these abilities at once, or her body will begin to destroy itself. She has no memories of her past life, just the scars from the lab. Maybe she doesn't even have a past life, and she was just made in that lab. Where does her name Fletcher come from? What are the limits of her powers? Who made her? Who are her real parents? I will have this story finished one day and it will be my most important project. But... When I turned 15, I wanted to keep this story from getting messed up. So I did the same thing I did with Thundersnow, but this time I was gonna make the story like Avatar so it wouldn't keep going, it was actually just building up to a big plot thread. And thus, the chapters of Skoda was born. The year is 34, 
59. The world has forever been changed by the emergence of magic, and Skota Mafaros was adopted by the Empire of Virsity and trained to be the Knight of Darkness alongside his siblings, who weren't related by blood, but were still a family nonetheless. The Knights of Space, Time, and Light all worked for the current king of Virsity. Skota was a prodigy loved by everyone, a proud warrior that fought for his kingdom. He never questioned the king, not a day in his life. Anyone who was put in his crosshairs were criminals that deserved to be destroyed. One day, he befriended a family that was loyal to the kingdom. As they should, the king was benevolent and fair. Unfortunately, the family had fallen on hard times and couldn't pay their taxes. It was no fault of their own. Life just happens. However, they were instated into Fiercity service, a form of slave community service, the entire family would be separated until their debts were paid. Skoda was appalled. He went directly to the king and asked why such an honorable family like this needed to be treated like criminals. The king, in turn, was taken aback by Skoda, saying he's helped arrest families just like them. This horrified Skoda. He demanded the family be freed and challenged the king to a battle. If he won, the family would be spared. If he lost, well, he just better not lose. Skoda was, of course, an adept fighter, but the king had his crown for a reason. For betraying his kingdom, the normal punishment would be death or a life sentence in prison. But the king did something truly evil. He used an artifact to turn Skoda into pure magic, effectively wiping him off the face of the earth. But until his magic truly expired, all he'd feel was pain and anguish. However, Skoda's magic would find its way onto a robot body, giving it sentience and the mind of Skoda. Skoda had now had no choice but to flee, and was declared an outlaw and a traitor. He tried to redeem himself by helping others escape VHD forces, trying to do the right thing to no avail. He thought about just giving up and finding somewhere to rust away, until he found himself upon the Kingdom of Mech. There, he found himself friends that would build him up, both figuratively and literally giving him a new purpose and a mission, to get stronger and defeat the king, becoming the new ruler of Beer City. Okay, that was a lot more than the previous stuff, and I skipped over so much after all the work I put into that project. And out of all the stories I'm about to tell you about, this is the one I would most likely turn into an anime. And you better believe I grew to love this one the most. Mmm, but... When I turned 16, I was really liking this character that I created in my head. After seeing Encanto, Batman, and Moon Knight, I know it's a weird combination. But this time, this story was going to be simple. Cut and dry, one drop, okay, whatever. You guys know where this is going. This is the story of Adze. A girl lived in a small village with her mother, but everything changed when a gang called the Symbol attacked. In the commotion, the girl was separated from her mother and even lost her own life. But instead of passing on, she ended up in the hands of someone who had further use for her. The girl was brought back to the world of the living as a ghost. Her past became so fuzzy she could barely remember even her own name, so she just went by silver and crystal clarity eventually coming to Sylvia Clarity. As she aged and interacted with other ghosts, she began to learn to control her powers, such as turning invisible and facing through solid matter. But on top of those common ghost abilities, she had the ability to manipulate the air around her, turning a soft breeze into a raging tornado. With this new form, she took up the alias Adze after the vampire firefly from Away Folklore. Adze took her vengeance out on the symbol However, she wasn't allowed to kill, nor make her existence public knowledge, so she attacked under the cover of night. All of her attacks were just chalked up to being some wild animal. Unfortunately, these attacks were enough to warrant the involvement of a new group. This team referred to themselves as superheroes. Aze wasn't terrorizing regular people, so she felt offended by this group, believing that they weren't there to protect people, only to capture her for who knows why. Check that. Aze actually didn't care why, because she was going to destroy those heroes, the symbol, and anyone else who stood in her way.
I will bring these characters back to the channel until I get some more subscribers. So for now, comment down below what you would like to see. I'm tempted to make a series where I educate you guys on how to write and draw characters using the lessons and failures that I've learned over the years. And yes, this is the end of the video. I learned my lesson on test series. Next time you see me, I'm going to make a video on Pokemon Legend ZA. Or Z to A, or Z dash A, or whatever. So, for now, what's next?